Many years ago, I worked with a retired EMT on a job that required a lot of driving together, which meant a lot of time spent filling silence with chatter. One day, she told me a story from her time as an ambulance driver, and it went something like this. So, one night, there was a high-speed chase between a suspect and police officer that went well over 100 miles per hour. The chase culminated in a massive crash involving both vehicles. She said that when she got to the scene, she first approached the suspect's car, took a gander, and then proceeded to the police officer's vehicle. Things did not look good. The officer was conscious, but wouldn't be for long. And she could do little besides bearing witness to the young man's final moments as his life ticked down towards oblivion. So, she did the only thing she could and provided him some comfort. A few scant moments of human interaction as the universe faded and the end drew nearer. And what she said to him was this. The other guy's head is in the back seat, and he isn't. Now, at this point, you might be asking yourself, what in the hell does that story have to do with Top Gun Maverick? And I'll tell you, because the connection has less to do with the story and the movie than it does the people. When the EMT told me that story, it blew me away, and still does all these years later. Because I can't imagine my last few moments of life being made more comfortable by news of another person's death. I can't imagine what would compel someone to think that it would, much less someone in the business of trying to save lives. And I truly don't know if it is that foreign and strange, or if it stems from people who belong to another world. One in which emergency response workers have some sort of outlook on life that I cannot begin to comprehend, much less understand. When I sat down to watch Top Gun Maverick, it was much the same experience because of the family members that I was fortunate enough to share it with. People for whom the world portrayed in the movie was several leagues closer to their reality than mine. You know those videos on YouTube where someone who possesses an expertise on a particular subject gives insight on and rates the accuracy of its depiction in movies? Well, imagine that, only that person is giving you expert commentary, pointing out what's right, what's wrong, what a million other things mean, and why they're there. Continually, throughout a film. And it's a damn good film, a kick-ass film. That was my experience watching Top Gun Maverick. So when I asked, for example, what a fifth-generation fighter was, he paused the film and proceeded to give an impromptu five-minute lecture on all of the different innovations to fighter jets and what they all meant. It was honestly one of those rare treats in life that come along out of the blue. Like going to the gym to shoot buckets and having Kevin Durant show up to give you pointers in your mid-range jumper. Was Top Gun Maverick a great movie? It's not without its flaws. I thought some of the story threads were undercooked and the character arcs underdeveloped. I was confused as to why Ed Harris was in the movie for one scene and then John Hamm seemed to just take over. In fact, John Hamm felt entirely flat and miscast. And he delivers his lines with what comes off as exasperation. Like he's saying, yeah, I'm your cliched superior officer who's had enough of your Top Gun shenanigans. Also, the film weirdly goes to great lengths to downplay his handsomeness, probably so he doesn't cast a shadow over someone else. Also, I know it's a petty gripe, but the depiction of sending text messages in the movie really got under my skin. They kept showing Maverick's phone as he was replying to a text message, and as soon as he sent it, a reply would instantly appear. Like Iceman already had it typed out and was just waiting to hit send. Either that or a 60-year-old man in the advanced stages of cancer texts faster than a Zoomer. But minor complaints aside, the movie was a revelation, simply for being unabashedly itself. It wasn't trying to do anything, say anything, be anything beyond a thrilling, intense action movie that just wanted to see some old friends and play around in its own sandbox. Or maybe it wasn't nearly as good as my short-term memory is telling me it is. Maybe the joy I experienced stemmed from spending time with someone for whom the movie meant a great deal. Someone who stood up at the end of the movie and said, I've seen it nine or ten times and I could watch it ten more. Someone who just wants to be entertained in a way that most of Hollywood seems to have forgotten about. Maybe I'll never understand how good or bad Top Gun Maverick truly is, because I saw it through the lens of a world I'll never understand.